Hi, Junior Rangers. Welcome back to the Ranger Zach Show. Let's play a game. I'm going to think of a food, and you have to tell me what I'm thinking of. Sound good? Yeah! Well, OK. The food I'm thinking about is golden in color. It's sweet, sticky, goes great on biscuits, doesn't have to be refrigerated, and never goes bad, even after 3,000 years. Is your tummy rumbling and your mouth watering yet? Well, if it is, you're probably thinking what I'm thinking. It's honey. And we all know where honey comes from, right? That's right, bees. So today, let's see what all the buzz is about as we learn about the busy bee. Ever wanna know what makes a tree grow tall? A white turtle wears a shell on its back. To get your hiking boots and a walking stick, come along with Ranger Zach. Come along with Ranger Zach. It's the Ranger Zach Show. Well, Junior Rangers, today we have two very special guests: Junior Ranger Gavin and Junior Ranger Grady. Say hi, boys. Hi, everybody. Gavin is 11 years old, and he's been keeping and learning about bees since he was eight. Actually, seven and a half. Seven and a half. And Grady, how old are you? I'm five. Five? You must be the youngest beekeeper on the planet. Well, maybe. <laughs> well, boys, before we get started, can you tell the Junior Rangers at home why we're wearing these fancy looking clothes? This is a bee suit, and it prevents us from being stung. That's right, Junior Rangers. Many of you know that when bees are scared or protecting the hive, they might give you a painful sting. But here's something you may not know. Not all bees can sting, and those that can don't really want to sting you. Just like when you get scared, you might give a little shout. Well, when a bee gets scared, they might give a little sting, which makes bees scary at first. But the more that we learn about these amazing little creatures, the more that we can see them for the beautiful and important animals that they are. Gavin, were you scared of bees when you first started beekeeping? Yes, I was. When I first started beekeeping, I got stung for the first time, and it really scared me. But after learning about the bees and keeping them for a while, I learned that they aren't so scary. It looks like you've come a long way since then. So Gavin, can you tell me what we're going to be doing in the hive today? Today, we're doing an inspection, and in that inspection, we're looking for eggs, larvae, worker bees, drone bees, and the queen bee. Okay, Ranger Zach, we're gonna get into this hive and you're gonna be in charge of the smoker. You got it, Gavin. The smoke inside this can helps relax the bees before we open the hive. in the hive is called a, a colony. colony. Inside a colony, you'll find several types of bees. When you see a bee buzzing from flower to flower, chances are you're looking at a forger, one of the jobs of a worker bee. Her main goal in life is to visit as many flowers as she can. When she lands on a flower, she uses her long tongue called a proboscis to slurp up nectar, which she stores in her honey stomach. <laughs> 
That's right, bees have a special stomach for honey, but we'll get to that later. A single forager may visit 5,000 flowers a day, drinking up nectar and collecting pollen. This is a queen bee. We can tell that it's the queen because it's bigger than the other bees. Her body is larger because her main job is to be an egg-laying machine. She lays as many eggs as she can and ensure that there's enough bees to keep the colony running. And even though she doesn't wear a crown, she still gets weighted on hand and foot. The worker bees feed and groom her so that she can focus on pumping out those eggs. She lays the eggs inside a little baby cradle of wax. See these here? They look like grains of rice, but these are bee eggs. Bee eggs hatch into larva, and larva turn into pupa. Pupa turn into baby bees. Look carefully as this baby bee emerges from her capped wax cradle. Oh, look at you, all grown up. The only males in the hive are called drones. You can tell a drone from a worker by their large black eyes. And their job is to mate with other queens so that they can lay more eggs. Now we come to the good stuff. Honey! Bees make honey by drinking nectar, and here's what they don't teach you in school. By throwing it up, again and again and again. Here's the story. When a forager lands on a flower, she drinks a little bit of nectar and stores it in her honey stomach. Now she may have to visit 1,000 flowers to fill up her honey stomach, but once she does, she flies back to the hive. Once she's back in the hive, get ready for the icky part. She throws it up into the mouth of another bee, and that bee throws it up into the mouth of another bee, and then another bee, and another bee, and another bee. And, another bee. and this process may sound gross, but it's actually an incredible talent. As the nectar moves from one honey stomach to the next, it becomes thicker and loses more and more water until it becomes honey. I love honey. Liquid honey. Honeycomb. Creamed honey. Yo, honey on toast. Are you ready for your Rangers Act fun fact? Well, here it is. Honey is the only food on the planet that never goes bad. And in fact, archaeologists have found honey inside the tombs of ancient Egyptians, which means if you found it, you could be eating mummy honey. aren't just important because they make delicious honey for us to eat. Gavin, why don't you tell the Junior Rangers at home what the world would be like if there were no bees? 
then it would be a lot less food because about one third of the food that you put in your mouth is pollinated by bees. Think back to all those flowers that one worker bee might visit each day. Each time a bee visits a flower, it moves pollen from one flower to the next. This process is called pollination and flowers need it to produce fruits, vegetables, and seeds, which help make sure that the plant can grow to the next generation. Well, Junior Rangers, thanks for showing me around the hive today. No problem, Rangers, Dad. If our Junior Rangers at home wanted to become beekeepers like you, how could they get started? You could head over to our shop, OC Bee Supplies. Let's head there now and put together a starter kit. Junior Ranger, we're back and we're at OC Beekeeping Supplies in Fullerton, California. And I'm here to show you what you're going to need to become a backyard beekeeper. A flea suit, gloves, a hive tool, a smoker, and the actual beehive. And before we say goodbye, Gavin and Grady are going to build us our very first beehive. Okay, Junior Ranger. I'm going to teach you how to build a beehive. All you need is a bottom, a box, some frames, It's that easy. Hi Junior Rangers, welcome back to the Ranger Station. I sure had a lot of fun learning about bees and beekeeping with Grady and Grayson today. If you want to try some honey made by the bees that we hung out with, make sure to check out their website at hoppahoneyfarm.com you can try some of their Blue Ribbon award-winning honey. Now before we say goodbye, let's do the Ranger Roundup. This week's question comes from Asher, who's six years old. Well, Asher, that is a great question. But whales don't blow water out of their blowhole, they blow air out of their blowhole. You see, dolphins and whales are mammals, which means they breathe air into their lungs just like us. And they breathe in through their nostrils, which is their blowhole located at the top of their head. Each time they rise to the surface, they take a big breath out. And because their body is wet, some of that water gets wrapped up in their breath, only making it look like they're blowing out water. I hope that answers your question. Now let's do the Junior Ranger Challenge. This week's Junior Ranger Challenge is to observe what plants and flowers the bees in your neighborhood are most interested in. Make a hypothesis on why the bees are attracted to that plant. Remember, a hypothesis is an educated guess. You can tag me in a picture of your special adventures at the Ranger Zach Show on Instagram, and you can be featured as one of our Junior Rangers of the Week. And don't forget, new episodes of the Ranger Zach Show come out every Monday, so please make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting adventures. And until next time, Junior Rangers, there's a world of adventure right outside your door, so get out there and go explore. This is Ranger Zach and Pearl the Squirrel, over and out.